one morning is not enough to become an expert on spatial analysis. I think that is a quite complex uh, topic with a lot of new things that are being developed in this field in the in the next in the last years, and there is a lot of development that is going on uh, on this field like uh, in a daily basis. So I think that my what I want from this point is that at least we introduce some concepts that are important for the spatial analysis that at the end of the morning you are able to run the more basic uh, analysis when you are dealing with spatial data. Okay? There is a, a, this is my first objective for this morning. Mm -hmm. There is a second hidden objective for this, for this morning that is that you get familiarized with our statistical package. So, I don't know how many of you have used R uh, already. <laughs> so, wow, well, this is a challenge. <laughs> it's a complete, complete naive population that we are going to immunize this moment. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that it will be very interesting. I, I will try to convince you that R is a nice software, a useful one, and I hope that. In some years, you will become in love with this. But, uh, so just some practicalities for this morning. We, we had organized this morning to have like a single break at around 10.30, uh, but uh, talking with uh, Stefan, there's a sandwich uh, ready. So probably we will do two breaks, a small break at 10.30 or 15 minutes, and a second break at 12.15. Uh, uh, no, sorry, at 11.45 for 30 minutes in order to take the sandwich and, you know, to have a, a small break for, for lunch. Hmm? I hope that, uh, yeah, I mean, we are flexible. Yes, we, we will not leave for lunch because we will end at 2 o'clock, but it will be wise to have at least some food. Mm. <laughs> okay, so this is a little bit how we are trying to organize the morning. So you saw that uh, there is four uh, exercises or practicals. That is the first one uh, where we will make our first contact with the software. A second one where we will uh, approach the spatial data and how to uh, describe the spatial data. In the, in the third uh, exercise, we will uh, explore some tools to detect clustering that we discussed already yesterday about this issue. And in the, in the fourth part, um, we will address the aggregated special data. So it's clear already from yesterday that there is two main uh, types of spatial data. We have point patterns, so X and Y coordinates for a number of points in a region of the space, and aggregated data, counts of cases in a specific uh, region. So it's quite useful for a conceptual, from a conceptual point of view to separate clearly these two types of information because we are going to use similar uh, methods but a bit different to analyze this type of uh, <coughs> data. Okay? But we will uh, go again uh, later about this. Uh, around this yeah? Do you have a copy of the exercise? Yeah, there is here. Copy. Don't 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 I have adapted, or I have created the, the, the practicals uh, based on the data that we analyzed already yesterday. In this way, you have already understand the, the, the problems that we were discussing yesterday, and probably it will be easier for you to keep thinking on these uh, specific epidemiological problems that we described yesterday. For the point pattern analysis, we will use the uh, outbreak in Stuttgart, you remember that uh, we have cases and controls in the center of Stuttgart related with a possible point source uh, contamination. So we will try to identify clusters, if we can find a cluster in the space related with this possible point source uh, uh, 
cooling tower contains a cooling tower. In the, uh, the last exercise of yesterday, we measure the incidence of Christosporidium in different, in different local authorities of uh, uh, South England. And, uh, but we just calculate the incidence. So in the, last, in the exercise that we will do for uh, area data, we will calculate incidence risk ratios. So we will compare the incidence in different areas. And we will uh, describe a methodology to calculate proper confidence intervals. For, for the incident situations and to represent them in, in a map. Okay, so this is the what I want to do today. But let's start uh, talking about the software that we are going to use for the session. So uh, we are going to work with uh, the R statistical package. R uh, is a broad uh, statistical package. So basically, all the uh, possible analysis that you can conduct in Stata, for instance, they are all in R. So everything that you think that you can do in Stata, you can do in R without any problem. On top of that, R uh, <coughs> contains a lot of extra libraries or package that allows you to perform, to carry out more complex or more advanced analysis. So it's like it offers you a huge variety of possible uh, analytical methods for epidemiology, but uh, as well other disciplines. Mm -hmm. There are two main advantages of R. The first one is that it's available <coughs> on the internet and uh, for everybody, and is uh, free software. It's open source. So this is really uh, uh, nice because you are not going to be dependent on whether the software is available in your working place to, to work with this software. So I think that it's a quite interesting uh, tool. Uh, there is some uh, constraints in the use of R, and this is because it's sometimes there are people that don't like it. Huh? The main problem is that there is no menu, like in Stata, where you select your analysis and you have a window that allows you to put the variables or whatever. Here, uh, we work with commands. So, but I think that most of you already in a startup, do you, you, don't, you don't use the menu so often. Most often you have a do file with your commands and you launch your do file uh, to the command window. So in this sense, R is very similar to, to a startup. The thing is that you don't have the possibility to go through the menu. You need to write the commands and to know the commands. I think that you need to think on R in a way that you need to build a little bit your your resources, you know, because once you have a do file, you, often you can use this do file for other projects because the analysis that you do are not like uh, infinite. There are a limited number of analysis that you usually run. So the thing is to create first some do file that you can use afterwards for uh, further analysis. Um, but there is a very important uh, concept in R that is different from other softwares. The, this concept is the concept of object. Okay? R is a software that is object-oriented. Okay? So if you think in Stata, you usually work with a single database. Okay? You have your database in Stata, and you are going to run some commands that will be applied to this database. The, different in, the main difference in R is that in your workspace, you are not going to have a single database. You can have multiple databases open at the same time. But as well other objects. What is an object in R? An object can be many things. The most uh, simple object in R is a number. Mm? You can have an object in R that is just a number. For instance, the number five. Mm? It's quite silly, but uh, sometimes it's useful because you, 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 you provide one name to a number and you can call this uh, number for several functions, for several uses. There are objects as well that are called vectors that are usually collection of numbers. For instance, 
a vector one can be one, two, three, four, five. This collection of numbers, okay? But as well, this vector one can be the incidence rate of our regions, okay? We have all the type of objects in R that are lists. Hmm? For instance, the names of all the participants in the course. Hmm? But there, is, there are even more interesting objects that you can have in, in your workspace that are maps, for instance. A shape file. Hmm? So you see that R is, is very powerful not to work just with one single database, like, like this data, but you can have in your same workspace several databases or several objects that you are going to use whenever you need them. Hmm? So I think that you already understand that it's much more powerful, you know, because you can combine easily databases, you can easily apply or take information from your database to plot in your maps. So I think that the, the ways that you can use this object increase, increase growth. There is another interesting type of objects in R hmm, that we can call them complex objects. Hmm? A comple complex object uh, a complex object is divided in slots. Hmm? We can think in the slots as in boxes, hmm? where we can put different type of objects. Okay, so one complex object, for instance, can contain a database, a map, labels, a list of labels, hmm? or um, an index. Hmm? So. A complex object will have different slots <coughs> that in each slot we will put other objects. Okay? It's a little bit like yesterday with the shape files. If you think in the shape like a complex object, okay, we have a database that was the DBF, DBF file, the map that was the shape file, and, and so on. You know? So in, in, in somehow R allows to create these complex objects that contain different information inside. We will, uh, we will discuss in the, in, the, in the exercise how these objects are, are built. We are not going to deal today much with these type of objects, but just to let you know that these increase a lot the power of, of the software in, in the sense that you can organize very well the information and you can apply different methods to different objects. So this is quite interesting. But this is Advanced. I don't want you to go uh, today too much into it. I think that the, the objective for today is to get familiarized with the, the software itself. So, as I'm saying here, uh, there are plenty of other objects that you can create numbers, vectors, lists, databases, maps, even regression models, or coefficients of the regression models, or tables of results. And you can store everything in your workspace and you can use it for additional analysis. So, I don't know, it's, it's <laughs> much broad the, the way that you can use your information and analyze your information. So, one interesting thing is that all the created objects are in the RAM memory of your computer, so they will be available for, for use in, immediately. And once that you, you, share, you save your uh, workspace, all the objects that you have, they will be stored in the same uh, uh, file. Okay? Then it becomes a complex object. And, uh, it's, more, it's more than that. All these, all these that I have drawn here is what we call the workspace. Hmm? When, you, when you save your workspace in R, the extension of the workspace will be a file that is called whatever name air data. <laughs> okay? And when you save your workspace with this uh, uh, file format, air data, it will store 
all this. So in your workspace, you can have several complex objects, maps, numbers, vectors, lists, several databases at the same time. Mm? And all will be stored in this type of file, RDTA. Mm? Questions? Is clear? So far so good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or not? If you have any questions, please don't, don't hesitate to interrupt me or... Hmm? Okay, so that's it. Now you know what to do. Let's go for the... For the <laughs>